Hey everyone, CWD Music Reviews here. I'm CWD and this is going to be a music review of the new Childish Gambino album, Awaken My Love. This is the third album of the musical pseudonym of producer, rapper, evidently a singer-songwriter, Donald Glover. Can't say I've been that invested in Glover as a musician or anything related to his art. Camp didn't really interest me, neither did because of the internet. There's just something about Glover, while yes, he's definitely a capable rapper, and he definitely has a sense of humor, there was just something about the bars and whatnot that didn't really connect with me as a listener, and there was just something a little off about the concepts he tends to go for, especially with Because the Internet, which had this whole scripted type thing that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So there wasn't really much reason for me to fully indulge in a Childish Gambino project at the time, so I decided that maybe when he comes out with another album, I'll definitely give that a try. Especially since I do think he definitely has capability as a rapper. He definitely has capability as a lyricist. But lo and behold, after his fantastic series Atlanta, has undergone its season finale, he decided to release a new album. But the weird thing is, he has done away with rapping entirely, and now is making neo-soul music. Neo-soul I've had a pretty positive history with as of late. I like D'Angelo a lot. Lauren Hill's debut album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, is one of my favorite albums ever. Plus you have artists like Anderson Pack that definitely indulge within that neo-soul sound as well as maybe a few other artists that have elements of neo-soul worked into their music so Glover going into this neo-soul sound definitely intrigued me especially when I heard the lead single to this album Me and Your Mama Oh God <laughs> This track is fantastic and surprisingly fantastic actually the track opens up kind of smooth and soft and serene with like this bell passage and these like chanted choir vocals going on. There's some P-funk or G-funk synth worked into the beginning that is pretty attention grabbing. The track definitely builds before all of a sudden it goes into this dirty, soulful, impassioned funk psych rock instrumental. The track is just incredibly intricate the way it just moves across like a sexual cycle. It starts off with like this initial attraction before there's like a plateau phase that just builds and builds and builds until there's a climax and then there's like this refractory period afterward. It's really amazing what Glover and his fellow musicians that worked on with this single as well as this entire album has able to create with. Vocally, Glover is impassioned as hell. He just sings with so much goddamn soul that I can't help but think of artists like James Brown. Lyrically, it doesn't seem like anything like too deep or even focused for that matter. The whole song sounds like a reaction than it does a formulated thought, which is an interesting concept for a song. And when I heard this track, I was hoping that he would be able to flesh out this kind of innovative, intriguing, and really eccentric ideas into an entire album. Now, the real question, was he able to do this for the most part, if not for the entirety of the album? Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed he has. This album is about 11 tracks in length, about 48 minutes long. And even at this length, even with this many tracks, I still wish it was longer. I still wish he had more to offer the listener than what's been presented. Because there's just so much variety and, strangely enough, accessibility to what it is he's doing that it's just easy to start the track from the beginning and all of a sudden you find yourself at the end even though you really don't want to be. You have six minute tracks like Me and Your Mama as well as Baby Boy, Stand Tall that definitely demonstrate a lot of intricate songwriting and progression that is just unbelievable. 
as well as the track Redbone, which is the second lead single to the album. This track is a smooth, kind of slow jam type thing, and Glover is singing in like this falsetto fused with some kind of effects going on that just works incredibly cohesively. I love how the guitar presents this interesting kind of passage that is over time like incredibly harmonized in somewhat dense but still pretty sleek fashion that I enjoy quite a bit. The hook's pretty catchy too. Stay woke, never sneaky. But what makes this album accessible and adds to the variety that which Glover is able to deliver are some of the shorter tracks. Tracks like Riot and Boogeyman, they are his most funkadelic tracks on the whole record. It's funky, it's soulful, it's eccentric, and pretty fantastic. The track Riot being the shortest track on the album, like less than two minutes, and it definitely has me imagining what a riot is. There's like this idea put forward into the song itself, and it's only able to get about 25% of what it intentionally does done. And I don't know if Glover intentionally did that, but if he did, that makes this song one of the smartest songs in the whole album. There's also the track Boogeyman, which feels more like a instrumental jam than it does like a whole entire thought out song, at least lyrically in, in terms of concept. Because it seems pretty general, yeah, the boogeyman is coming to get you. But what makes me love this track is like the sheer energy and eccentricity that the track delivers. It's just a fun track, along with the track Have Some Love, which is more laid back, it's more easygoing, but still maintaining that kind of pace. And there's like little nuances in the instrumentation that I love a lot. It sounds like a funky, psychedelic campfire song. I love this like little organ passage that has kind of a upbeat groove to it. There's some slide guitar work to this track. It's just amazing. The track Zombies is a more menacing and particularly haunting track. And Glover sings in like this really soulful and mid-paced type way that is pretty engaging. It took a while to grow on me, but it definitely led to me enjoying the track a lot. Especially with the song being about either this culture or this, probably the music industry, like being described as zombies and how they are going to chew you up for your soul and for the sole purpose of profit. And that definitely was hinted when there was like a little sl sliver of autotune when he's like, and they want your soul. As far as Glover's voice goes across this album, I don't really have much of any complaints about his capabilities. But I do have maybe kind of a complaint about some of the effects thrown on it. It's rarely ever is it miss in terms of like being a hit or miss type thing. And I think the only major misstep, in a way, would be the track, California. The track itself is really cool. I, I like the instrumentation. It's got a nice, low-key, kind of stripped-back Calypso vibe to it with some flute, like little bells. I'm not sure what it's about entirely, given the fact that I can't understand half of the lyrics. But I would have to assume that it's about these women who are like amateur filmmakers or whatever thinking they got what it takes to go to California and go professional even though all they're doing is just these short little Vine videos. Or at least I assume that's what it is, but unfortunately my complaint with this track is Glover's vocal delivery and maybe the little bits of effects thrown onto it. He just sounds like if Young Thug was making Calypso music. But really that's the only like misstep in terms of his vocals. Everywhere else with the exception of The Night Me and Your Mama Met, his vocals definitely have a lot of charisma and intoxication to what it is he's doing. Take the track Baby Boy, which is probably my favorite track on the record. He's singing in this falsetto all throughout, and he's singing with such uh, sensuality and such 
ease. The, the instrumental on this track, it's also pretty fantastic and intricate as well. The way it's all stripped back, the bass is nice and warm. I do like the additional background vocals that really adds a layer to the hook and as well as the chorus. Glover himself actually has this little moment of spoken word that I like a lot. He's essentially saying, there was a time before you and there will be a time after. That really got to me a lot. But that's definitely something that Glover has been able to pull off, making these soul songs, these funky, psychedelic, kind of world-ish soul songs and be able to sell them vocally and in terms of production and instrumentals. Like on the track Terrified, which is also another kind of interesting and pretty laid back and kind of haunting song in a way. That even at its four and a half minute length, or what feels like a four and a half minute length, it doesn't feel all that long or grating or anything of that nature. He definitely is able to take an idea and flesh it out particularly well in particularly intricate fashion. Especially on the closing track, Stand Tall. The track itself starts off with like these low-key guitar and some low-key bass going on and he's just singing in almost a cappella fashion so soothingly. And then like halfway into the track after like some vocal improvisation, the track like guides you into this psychedelic odyssey that is pretty random and pretty intricate. The only thing I do have in terms of a complaint though is how semi-anticlimactic it can be. It ends up being at the end, but that grew on me quite a bit and I don't really have that complaint anymore. There's definitely quite a bit of blues, psychedelic, and funk influence all over this album. I mean on Riot you do have a Parliament sample or a Funkadelic sample, I'm not completely sure. I just know that George Clinton has writing credits on that track. And the track The Night Me and Your Mama Met, which is an instrumental cut that's pretty cool, it's got Gary Clark Jr. of all people doing lead guitar, or I would assume lead guitar, he does have writing credits on this cut. The style that which the guitar is being played is definitely reminiscent of something I would hear Gary Clark Jr. do. and. This is weird, because we've known him best as a rapper, an actor, and for him to just do this random switch out of nowhere, doing this singing thing, with the only track, California, being the closest thing to a rap cadence, it's remarkable. I mean, yeah, this album isn't completely fantastic. Like I said, California kind of sticks out like a sore thumb and is probably my least favorite track on the record. You do have tracks like The Night Me and Your Mama Met, as well as Riot, that could have been fleshed out a little better, but still, this thing is particularly great. I don't really have much of any complaints about it. If you're someone that is kind of a skeptic about Childish Cambino, going into this lane of music, this style of music, then check this out. You'll have no sense of skepticism about it whatsoever. I think people that have been fans of Gambino for the longest time that are saying, oh, these people are finally waking up to the wondrous and fantastic music of Donald Glover. The thing about that is, if you wouldn't have told me that this was Childish Gambino or Donald Glover, I would have assumed it's someone else, because this sounds a completely different artist from when I listened to tracks off of Because of the Internet, tracks off of that royalty mixtape, tracks off of Camp, and quite honestly, for the better. In music history, musicians have always taken these huge risks when they just completely transform out of nowhere. Some of it, I think, went remarkably well and ended up being a career-defining moment, while others, it was definitely a flop. And in this situation, I hope he keeps doing this. You know, I hope he keeps making this kind of soul music, this kind of funky, psychedelic sound, because this might feel like a preface to what it is he wants to do next. I really hope he does indulge and flesh things out on the next album if he's going to keep doing this. Because this is easily the best decision Glover has ever made 
in music, hands down. This album is a plus 2.5 out of plus 3. Yeah, I dug this thing quite a bit. If you like Funkadelic, if you like D'Angelo, if you like James Brown, Jimi Hendrix, there's definitely quite a bit of that influence all across this album. And I think Gambino is, has been able to take these influences and implement them in such fascinating fashion. And this is definitely going to be a favorite of mine for the year as 2016 is coming to a close. But if you give me this album a listen, what did you think of it? Did you like this album? Did you dislike this album? What was your reasoning for that and what should I consider listening to and reviewing next? This is CWD Music Reviews here, signing off.